Morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. Latest from Florida is that the hurricane is now a tropical storm moving off the coast of Daytona Beach. It has wrecked havoc across the state. I'm joined by an old friend and a future speaker of the United States House of Representatives, GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. Good morning, Congressman McCarthy. Welcome back. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. And before we begin, uh, my hearts and prayers go out to everybody in Florida. It looks just devastating the amount of rain and some of the damage. But I know um, the Governor DeSantis was out front on this, and I know they'll get that get electricity back on and get out to everybody as soon as safe they can. Uh, Leader McCarthy, is there room in the CR for some relief funds for Florida and Puerto Rico? Both of them are going to be struggling mightily to rebuild some infrastructure, and I'm not sure the money was allocated in the last infrastructure bill. Well, the one thing in the CR I do know within the Senate they have uh, make sure FEMA and the others have resources already sitting there. One thing that happens in these situations, they have to evaluate what they need, but there's money sitting there, and I think we'd come back after the election for anything left that they need help with to be able to provide that. All right, Leader McCarthy, I want to go to the commitment to America. I've read it. I've gone through it. The most interesting thing to me, I was just talking about with Representative Gallagher and former Senator Talent, is the proposal that you have come up with for a select committee on China. Uh, first of all, how long would that last for? How big would it be? And what would its writ? Well, that's a very good point. I mean, the thing that your listeners have to understand, this commitment to America is something the entire conference has worked on for the last year and a half. And you know you, I tried to put together a bipartisan task force on China, and I had the Democrats agree this was more than four years ago, and then the night before we were going to announce, they backed away. Well, we went forward anyways, and they've come back with some un- unbelievable recommendations. Uh, so what I would like to do, if we're fortunate enough to win the majority and unspeaker, create a select committee on China, where it'd be Republicans and Democrats together, it'd last the entire uh, term of Congress. They would look at areas that we have fallen behind on China, threats, uh, technology, all the different aspects. You know, when you think about critical minerals, we've got a new mine up and running. China controls 90% of critical minerals, but they control 95% of the processing of critical minerals. Then we look to where they're even going in our food supply. We look to what they have done, the technology stealing. We look to what they're trying to do with Taiwan. I think we just need to have a bipartisan, one message from America and make sure we don't fall behind in any areas of where we go. It makes perfect sense to me. In fact, the select committee might become a standing committee because the challenge from China is so omnipresent and it, it, it's everywhere. Let me ask, how big is this committee going to be? And is it possible that it would evolve into a standing committee if you got people like Patrick McHenry to say, OK, this slice goes over there and you got the incoming head of uh, energy and commerce and said this slice goes over there? Is, uh, how big are we talking about? How long might it last? Well, what we're trying to do is I'm going to create the select committee for this term. Um, I think it could become a full committee in itself, but it'll have the power within a select committee. Um, Jurisdiction-wise, we'll have to go see areas that they need because it's brand new, just starting out. I won't make it too big, but I'll make it large enough that it could have the people that we need on it from both sides of the aisle with the expertise. Do you have a chair in mind? I have a couple chair in mind, yeah, Um, but, you know, um, select committees are different than it doesn't need the steering. And I'm going to be talking to a few of those people, um, right after the election. It does not need steering committee approval. You just get to put it up. A select committee and like a, a rules committee or Intel, those are selected directly by the leaders of both parties. I'm glad to hear that. Go for the talent, go for the talent. Now yeah. I have lobbied you before. I'm going to lobby you on air. The collapse in Afghanistan is the worst thing to happen in American national security since Vietnam. I don't want a long-term process. I just want to look at the last 60 days with the select committee. I know Armed Services wants to do this, but I would love to focus some hearings on what the hell happened, Leader McCarthy. Any chance of that happening? Well, you don't have to lobby me. This is something personal to me as well. If you read in the Commitment to America in this section, you know, we have uh, an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built on freedom, and a government that's accountable. In that accountable 
accountability section we have directly in here that we are going to look at. We don't have to study all of Afghanistan. We just have to study those last two, three months. Why did the president ignore the recommendations of the military? Why did it go so wrong? We never want to repeat that again. We, we ended up with 13 new gold star families, and we didn't have one casualty for a year and a half before. Um, so I don't want a long, drawn-out. I know we've got a lot of individuals in the military that are willing to talk about it and make sure that it doesn't get repeated. We're going to look at that, get that report back, and have hearings directly on that. As, as with the DOJ going after parents for calling them terrorists, knowing where the origins of COVID actually began, there's a number of areas where the Democrats have just ignored doing anything. There's a responsibility when it comes to Congress, regardless of in the administration, that you should have these hearings, you should have this oversight, and that's exactly what we will do. Uh, uh, Leader McCarthy, I learned yesterday that Lindsey Graham and Michael Waltz sat down with the superintendent of the Air Force Academy, the latest eruption of wokeness in the military academies. I don't think that needs a select committee, but are your members aware of this and worried about it? Yes, very worried about it. It shouldn't be just our members. It should be our entire nation. Our military should have the very best and shouldn't worry about wokeism, should worry about making sure it be so strong enough that we never go to war. This idea of what they're changing, what's happening there, is atrocious. I, I was shocked. I thought it was like a, a parody that it couldn't be true when I was reading these reports. But, yeah, this cannot stand and this cannot continue. For us to have the strongest military in the world, this is not the behavior and what needs to be taught at the Air Force Academy. Now, leader, soon to be Speaker McCarthy, uh, I want to get to politics. But first, I got to talk to you about the big, the hard to, to make it happen. We've got to cut spending because inflation is in part driven by fiscal excess. We've got to cut regulations in most places, and yet big tech has to be brought under control. How do you get the trifecta? Cut spending, cut regulations, get big tech under control with meaningful oversight and regulation. Those are very good points, and those are key elements of an economy that's strong. You know, yes, People will tell you, how did this inflation begin? Well, it was the American Rescue Plan, what Democrats voted with is $2 trillion. They've spent more than any other Congress. We have to curb our, uh, this spending. We have to eliminate many things of what they've wasted money on. We need to be able to pull back money that's just sitting there that's been wasted through the process. It'll be easier if we get the majority in the Senate, which I believe we can, through the appropriation process together. Remember the roles of Congress. Now, president will still be in the White House, but I believe we could really start or put ourselves on a path to a balanced budget, and that's what we need to do. Remember what Steve Ratner said. He said the, the original sin of inflation was the American rescue. Remember what Larry Summers, the former Democrat uh, Treasury, uh, Secretary of Treasury said, you know, don't do this, this would cause inflation. But the other thing that causes inflation as well is all the regulation that the Democrats have put on. It costs more. You look at what they've gone after, uh, taking away incentives to work, paying people more to stay home. Again, it hurts our supply chain, hurts productivity. The other thing they've gone after is energy, raise the cost of energy, which, which again, contributes to inflation, harms people. And really, to all your listeners, could you afford to give up one month salary or one month of your wages? Everybody would say no, but that's what's been taken from them by the Democrats, because one month wages out of a year is 8.3%. Inflation is above that. That has been taken from you. So what we're trying to do is all those things above, cut our spending, get ourselves under control, become energy independent, not only will it lower the price of gas, it will make America stronger and the world safer. You know this, you. I do. American natural gas is 41% cleaner than Russian natural gas. We should be the supplier to our allies in Europe, not that they're dependent upon Russia, and it would create more American jobs. Cutting that regulation, remember, if we're able to win the Senate as well as the House, you have the Congressional Review Act that allows you to repeal a regulation in a timetable with 51 votes in the Senate. We did a number of those in the last places, about 16 of those. We also have the ability then for reconciliation. With reconciliation, we can guarantee to put a bill on the president's desk and dare him to sign it or veto it. But can you stop the student loan bailout later? Can you stop the student loan bailout? The president hasn't mentioned it since he did it because it's such a disaster in the minds of, of ordinary Americans. Is there a way for the Congress to stop that? 
Well, there's a way to go about passing something in the House, but remember, the president's still there. Will he sign the bill? Will he get 60 votes in the Senate? The courts is one area, but there's ways to pull back on that. And what your listeners have to understand is not what the president says, that he's going to waive or forgive some student loans. No, what he's doing is taking somebody else's debt and making somebody else pay for it, which will be all of us. You watch what the CBO came out with and said it's more than $420 billion. That's $420 billion more that it's going to cost us. Again, causes inflation. So we can go about in the approach process putting certain elements into that package to try to see if the president would sign them and dare them. But the other thing we can do on the very first day is repeal those 87,000 IRS agents. That, that's going to I, good, be the very first bill on the first day. Last two questions for you. DOD spending. Um, I, I know some people saw the commitment to America. They wonder if it's enough for like the B-21 Raider, the Columbia-class submarine. And then I want to talk to you about something I learned at the gathering in Wyoming, the ESG and the proxy services. I mean, that's an antitrust oh, yeah. waiting. So let's start with yeah. the ESG and the proxy services. That's an antitrust violation. I learned about that at the conference you held. You're, you're right, 100%. And what this ESG is doing, it's making the entire country weaker. It's making China and India stronger. It's destroying our companies, but it's just totally playing politics. It is antitrust where we go, and you're going to see us tackle that in part of the commitment to America as we go forward. I mean, really, when you look at the utility of the commitment to America, and people say, what is it? It's a plan for a new direction. And the sad very, part is all, very good all the challenges that you have, all these challenges from inflation, from crime, to the border, to our weakness around the world, it's all created by democratic policies. And they have no plan to fix it, but we do. That's why I, I challenge all your listeners, go to commitmenttoamerica.com, read about it, join with us, because this really is a plan to change, change this country. And I believe this election is a hinge election. This is a once-in-a-50-year election. It almost feels like 1979, 1980 again. Think about it. When was the last time you had inflation like this? When was the last time we had an energy crisis like this? When was the last time we had the strongest military in the world, but our commander-in-chief looked weak? When was the last time we had Americans held hostage in the Middle East, in Iran and Afghanistan today? Um, all of this is set for what was 1980 about? Well, it was Ronald Reagan talking about principles and policies to make America stronger. That's exactly what the commitment to America is, based upon the policies that would put a new path and a new direction so the next century will be ours. Leader Kevin McCarthy, soon to be Speaker McCarthy, keep coming back. You've done a great job recruiting great candidates like Juan, who's going to be joining me tomorrow, Siskamani. Uh, Juan you just Siskamani's great. Is it, well, we got all the great ones coming up. Thank you for your time, Leader. Thank you. Appreciate you.